your administration has rightly invested very heavily in infrastructure, public housing, health, uh, your big four priorities. And as a consequence, there's pressure on the budget um, and I think some concerns that Kenya too may be subject to a little bit less growth than investors would like to see. Do you mind sharing your vision for maintaining growth over the next few years? Thank you. Um, I think the first point to note is that um, for us to be able to successfully succeed, and I just want to go back to the statement that I made earlier, we, we must accept that we, we, we have to first and foremost design a social contract with our people that best fits um, our particular uh, circumstance. And to acknowledge that standard democracy in a time of growing nationalism and uh, ethnic tensions, we need to be able to look at that from a different angle. And that's why we're saying, for example, Democracy first past the post in Kenya has proved to be not only not unsuccessful but unsustainable. And that is why we're, we're trying to engage each other to see how we can come up with a social contract that always allows for inclusivity so that there are no groups or regions that feel left out. That social political stability is fundamental for us to grow a sustainable uh, um, a development path or a sustainable uh, economic uh, path with sustainable and progressive growth. And if you look at some of the crises that you're seeing emerging in different parts of the country is that we looked at their economies but once the, 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 the political factors kicked in, um, they're struggling. We in Kenya want to flip that over. We want to say that yes, we are interested in economic development, economic growth, but we more importantly want to fix the social political <laughs> contract because that is the foundation that presents uh, future stability. So. Our key focus, number one, is that. And that's why we're also saying we want to now begin engaging the world on that basis. That is why we're saying there was a time, especially when uh, uh, um, our countries were being founded, where the American principle and love for freedom and democracy saw you grant a lot of support to those of us who were struggling and fighting uh, against colonialism and for our independence. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, very strong support uh, for, for our economic uh, agenda. A lot of the m companies that first uh, set foot in independent Africa were largely American companies that uh, saw themselves you know, c coming through. We want to again renew that contract. And to recognize that, yes, if we want a sustainable economies, we need to be able to do so, not just depending <coughs> on the public sector, which puts strains and stresses on our budgets and so forth, but to re-engage once again with the private sector. And that is why I'm saying there is huge scope for great returns, right? Uh, especially here in America, as, as, as populations age, right? You want better returns for your pensions. You want better returns. And there can be no better place for that investment than in Africa. And that investment also then in turn helps us achieve the key pillars that we want to achieve for our people. Housing, uh, job security, food security. Right? and health for a younger, growing population that also serves as a humongous market opportunity for American goods and services. That is your new growth horizon. So 
we're here first and foremost to strengthen that partnership between our two governments, as you have said, that has been uh, elevated to a, to a higher level, but with a clear understanding that for us to be able to achieve our economic agenda, maintain the growth rates that we want, we want to deepen our partnership with private sector by granting them opportunities for them to be able to come in, help us achieve the key priorities that we need, but also give great and ample return um, for the investments that they themselves are making.